it's a really popular material in this laser space. So many different shapes, types of products, and colors. But like acrylic, one setting doesn't work across all different colors. And kind of like plywood, it's not consistent across multiple manufacturers. I'll get you my settings right away. And if you want to stick around for a few more minutes, we'll put it into the laser and test it out. And we'll talk about it a little bit further. Leatherette on your Nova Plus 60 watt RF CO2 laser. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Today on Laser Nug. We'll drop down into my material library for my Nova Plus 3560 watt. And here are my leatherette settings. These settings work with my rawhide brown with a 2.5 standard lens on the Nova Plus, 1000 millimeters a second, 30 and 30, no air of course, fill mode, bi-directional, and 300 lines per inch, one pass. These cut settings should work with an adhesive on the back. 50, 50, and 50, <laughs> I know, probably could tune those in, but they work. Air on, full air, line mode, one pass. So give those a shot. If nothing else, it'll give you a good place to start. Now let's talk a little more about Leatherette. These sheets are from at least two different suppliers. I'm not sure if there's a third because I got these at different times over the last six or eight months. I know this one for sure came locally. This is the one I primarily use. And these were sent to me at some time in the past. But what I found is that it's very similar to acrylic. Although your settings are gonna work generally for certain colors, you're gonna to have to revise those settings, which I'm gonna give you some extra settings at the end of this video. And secondly, I've also found that when you start to get into these types of products where you've got kind of a shiny silver or a shiny gold, it also tends to change your settings because it's difficult to get that nice, crisp, shiny, or that deep brown and gold or black and gold without going into the back layer of the leatherette. And we'll take a look at this guy, for example. You'll see I started out, looked pretty good, but when I looked at it really closely, you could still see it kind of looked dark, like almost that my power wasn't getting through the brown layer. So I turned up the power and then I got this. And what I realized is that that black shading or that dark shading was in fact, because my power was so strong, it was going into the black backing. So after a few more tries, I found a really nice setting here that gave me a really nice shiny gold. Similarly, I had the same issue here because when you try to refine your settings, you find that the settings you used on the last piece did not work the same on the black and silver. Looks pretty good, this guy on the left, but once again, a little refinement and I got that nice shiny clean silver without going into the backer and without leaving any residue from the top. But my rawhide, that's my main setting and I get a nice deep rich black and I've been using that for some time and it works out great on the Nova Plus. My cut settings was a bit of a challenge. I didn't use a material test card, I very seldom ever do for a few different reasons, but I kind of create my own. Small circles or squares or polygons, I test my settings and surprisingly, all of these settings you hear here on all these circles, they all worked. They cut right through the adhesive, no problem, nice and clean, no discoloration, no discoloration on the front leatherette itself. Until I tried to use it in the design and none of these settings worked. As you can see here, it took me six tries to continue refining the cut settings because I was getting partial cuts and it wouldn't cut all the way through. Not sure why that happens, but it just, it's one of those things I've also found with material test cards is that when you get those little squares, you sometimes kind of hones you in or gives you kind of a notional or a, an idea of what your setting should be. But once you actually use it in a larger design, quite often that setting you chose doesn't actually work. And the same thing occurred here with the leatherette. So I had to continue refining, redoing the design and changing my cut settings until I finally got cutouts properly. And nice clean cutouts too. No discoloration on the front or the back. So especially if you're new to the Nova Plus, I'm gonna put the honeycomb back in, we'll get the leather right inside, and then we'll run a test file so you can see the results. 
In the toolbox that came with your Nova Plus 35, you're going to find a number of things, including four earth magnets. These are super strong. In fact, so strong I've already broken two of them. They snap together far too hard and just crack right down the middle. But these are great for holding down soft materials like leatherette to your honeycomb. Because I'm going to be engraving and cutting, I'm just going to take my cutting tip off and I'm going to put my six millimeter engrave tip back in there. Remember, clockwise to take it off, counterclockwise to screw the new one back up. I'm going to use the rawhide with the adhesive on the back. Another nice benefit to these magnets is they're low profile, so in the event that they're in the way, they're not going to collide with your laser head. It'll go right over it. Let's bring up that Z table and autofocus. Another nice feature of this Nova Plus is it has autofocus anywhere on the bed. Okay, we're in good shape. Let's go send a file. I've got the file here at the Nova Plus. I'm going to push file, grab that file by pressing enter. Everything looks okay. My cut layer is last, which is great. I'm going to set my origin here and I'm going to frame my job. And I think I have enough room. That's perfect. So we're all good to go. But before I start, I want to check my air assist settings before I run the job. About a week ago, I got my very first air assist error. The Nova Plus has a built-in sensor that if your air has been adjusted too low for that nozzle or for that laser head, the machine will actually error out and stop the job. And you'll see a small error show up on the screen and it'll tell you that your air pressure is too low. So that's why you have these two test buttons. So for my engrave, I like it around 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So I'm just going to test it. As you can see, it's too high, 0 0.6. That's going to give me a lot of extra debris on top of the material. So I'm just going to turn that down till I get, you know, kind of that 0 0.4, 0 0.6. There we go. I think we're pretty good there. And then I'm going to test my high. I want it up as high as possible to make that cut. And we're at max pressure. So now I'm good to go because I know I have enough air that's going to get into that barrel on that laser head and keep the lens cool. Let's run the job. Clean it up with a little water and air, and we'll take a look at the results. Nice, just water in a rag. No scorching, nice, clean cut, and a nice, consistent, deep engrave. However, I still have to work on that air a bit because I got a little bit more debris on it than I normally do. When I run this leatherette through the bolt, I virtually don't even have to wipe it afterwards. There's almost no debris or dust whatsoever on it. So those settings work really nice on this rawhide, but they're not gonna work on the other colors. Let me show you. Let's test it on the black to silver. So here's your results. I used the exact same settings for the rawhide, which were beautiful here, and I had to adjust my settings here. And I think you can see clearly in the camera, this silver is a really dull black silver. It's because it was most likely going too far into the backer on this leatherette, whereas this one gave me just the right amount of power to give me that nice, bright, deep, rich silver on the black. So kind of just like plywood or any other type of materials you get, once you find a good supplier and you're happy with the quality, 
probably best to stick with it. That way you always know and your settings are kind of tied to the build or the build quality of that leatherette. You're also going to find that your, your colors are going to change your settings. And lastly, I've also noticed that in all the testing I've done, this is one of those materials where the lower your LPI, the better quality of the engrave. You'll notice my LPI is only at 300. I'm usually running 600, 700, sometimes 400. But in order to get that clean engrave, get that stuff off, I had to start dropping my LPI as opposed to increasing it. Interesting. So before we wrap up for today, if you want to take a minute, I'll give you my settings. They're very close for these other colors if you might find it helpful. So you had the settings for the rawhide to black. All of these settings are at 1,000 millimeters per second and 300 LPI. So the other colors I've tested, for cream to black, you're going to want to leave it at 30%. If you're using a dark brown to gold, you want to try it around 20%. Your light blue to black, 30%. And your black to silver is at 25%. And those should at least give you a good, safe, reasonable place to start. They may work perfectly or you may need to adjust slightly. So I think that'll wrap it up for another video. I can tell from the comments on the videos that a lot of you folks have ordered a Nova Plus and it's on the way or you're just about to get it. So I hope you find these videos helpful, especially in trying to start off working on your settings on different materials. As you know, I've had the Bolt for over a year and a half and it's a 30 watt laser. This is a 60 watt laser and I learned pretty quickly it's not a matter of just simply doubling your settings and everything works. You, you've got a much better understanding of how to get to your settings. But if nothing else, hopefully these give you folks a place to start and it'll get you a chance to be up and running once you get it installed and plugged in. Have a great week. Have fun with that laser. And by all means, if there are any topics on the Nova Plus or the Bolt that you really need some more information on, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to get a video out on it. Please be kind to each other and I'll see you again. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.